connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose. Want to make an impact in the kingdom? Ready to tap into your future? And advances the kingdom for soul winning. This word, bread of life, that I received today. Mm hmm. Uh huh. All right, I hope you believe that. You may be seated. We're going to come out of Proverbs 25, I mean 21 and 5 out of the English Standard Version. We want to welcome all of you in. We're here at the Greenwood Campus. want to thank you, those that are here for in-service, and for those that are at Greenville, they're probably still out somewhere eating. Uh, they tried to hit me up this morning for breakfast, so um, they, they are somewhere probably eating. They sent me a menu, so I'm about to talk about them after church. Um, but thank all of you that are here for in-service and to our Greenville campus as well as to our virtual campus, to all of our friends and friends that are watching us across the nation as well as the world. We're not going to uh, take up your time. I'm going to try to give you a bit of insight. Uh, we have been discussing or introducing finances, and so you get a lot of different feedback when you talk about money. And so when you begin to talk about money, uh, people get a little eerie and they say, well, you know, what does it have to do with church? Uh, money is a part of everything. There's a huge misinterpretation out there that many people have and have passed on for decades. And they use the term that, and it's in the Bible. Um, I think they say the love of money, uh, money is the root of all evil. And the problem with that is if you love money, the love of money is the root of all evil. And so we're going to touch on that just briefly today because there's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong, and everyone needs money. But to learn what to do with money. So the scripture says in Proverbs 21 and verse 5 in the English Standard Version, it says the plans. And so if you're a note taker and you're part of the ministry and you're one that watches through the virtual campus, I want you to ask yourself, how are you closing out third quarter? And not only how are you closing out third quarter, how are you preparing for fourth quarter? If there's no preparation, then there is no plan. And let me give you a front word for the writers. And, and, and so for some of my seniors that are here, it, 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 you, you may fill up the hill, but this is information that you can pass on to your grandchildren, to your great-grandchildren, and as, as God see it that you continue to live, they can be a help to you. Most people do not have a plan financially at all. They just pay bills. And I'm, I'm going to say this because I'm in the rural church. Many people in the rural areas have all the land and a lot of opportunity. But here's the thing. They have been taught to be afraid of money. Because many people don't know what to do with money when they get it but spend it. And I'm going to share with you the beginning of understanding you cannot be the seed of Abraham and always begging for bread. David said, I am old now. I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. And here's the thing. I want you to open your mind to this. You don't know how God's going to bless you. Many things happen. And I know the old traditional church and what the old church said. They taught us what they knew at the capacity of the knowledge that they had. This is a new day and things are different. And your blessing may not come like everybody else's blessing. Your blessings now are going to be through prep and process and planting. Prep. What is prep? You have to gather the ingredients. 
What does that mean in lay terms? How do I get this to work for me? How? How do I get this to work for me? So now he says the plans. And, and, and I got stuck on this because I, I, I've, I've been doing this for so long. And I said, now I know there are people that's going to get upset because one, the preacher talking about money. And no, nobody want to talk about money. And definitely shouldn't be the preacher. Well, I ain't a preacher right now, I, but I am. But I'm going to tell you something. We are living beneath our privilege. And I'm going to tell you right off the bat. Miracles do happen. Blessings do come. Somehow, throughout your life, they didn't tell us about planting the seed. Will you put that back up, please? People have seen enough of me. What are your plans? Now put me back up. Your plans cannot be your job. You got a job today. You feel saved today. You feel like you can pay your bills this month. What happens if your job lets you go? The plant closes. The company goes out of business. The doctor retires. What are your plans? Now, I'm, I'm going to say something. I'm not trying to be offensive, but I have learned. Notice I've learned from wealthy people. Wealthy people don't even carry insurance. They don't carry any life insurance. They don't carry in a medical insurance. Anybody ever been around really, really wealthy people? They think it's stupid. Not all of them, but the majority of them. Because they have accumulated enough that their wealth becomes perpetual. We need a job just for insurance. Now, our father, Abraham, was self-insured. See, people, I don't know what people, this is when I need my good friend, Reverend Curtis Fleming, and y'all can hashtag him. I don't know what he's doing this morning. Y'all can hashtag him. I see you smiling, Deke. I love him, brother. This is when I need my good Reverend Curtis Fleming because he's, he's a great historian, and he, can, he shares a lot with me and has shared a lot with me in, in the time that we've shared together. But I'm going to give you something that you may not know. And I'm going to let you go home. You have an innate gift. But let me go back to Abraham. Everything Abraham had produced. If you go back now and study in Africa, there are still people who are sure to, uh, sh uh, shepherding sheep and goats and cows. We think nothing of them. We're down here in Hodges. Y'all used to have pigs and chickens. And, and you were able to do what? Provide for yourself. Now people say, well, you can't sell them. Why would you sell what you go eat? It, Abraham had goats, sheep. He had land. Every believer in Christ should own land. He will bless your hands and you will work your land. And what that does is it teaches you, one, you've got to prep. So write that prep. You've got to gather the ingredients. Most families, most people, most individuals, they have no plan. Can I tell you what their plan is? They get paid to pay bills. When do you get paid to pay you? When do you get paid to invest in you? Now, I'm guilty of not taking vacations. But some people have vacations and they only can take vacations when their job say they can take vacations.
when the office is closed, when the manufacturing is closed. I, I'm going to say this, the plans. If you don't get anything else this morning, you're not going to succeed if there's no plan. The scripture says the plans of the diligent. So what I did, and let me go back to what I originally said, I knew I would get flashbacks because people, you know, they want you to preach what they want you to preach and they want you to preach salvation. So my point is, so once I get salvation, I don't still don't know how to live. So the plans of the diligent leads to what? Surely to an abundance. I don't want you to raise your hand, but how many of us are living in abundance? It says surely. And if you break that word down, it's almost like guaranteed. We have lost faith in us. So we work for other people, and we should to a certain degree. But when do you work and build something for you? Because as long as you work for other people, you would never have what other people have. I wish I could talk to you. I, I, I talked with someone yesterday. They work, f th their wife works for, well, not yesterday's, Friday, for one of the richest women in the country. Guess what they own? A bean company. And so I said, now, the, the elder lady probably don't have a problem and she doesn't want anybody. They said she's got like a 15,000 square foot house. She don't want anybody in there but her and your wife. He said, yeah. I said, but she got children. He said, yeah, she got two. I said, but the children don't want to share no money. He said, you're absolutely right because every time something happens, they want to give flowers. See, people with money don't plan to give you nothing. They give you stuff. He said they could at least give her a bonus or something. You can work for people, but it's very few of them that want you to have what they have. And many people are working for people, and we all should. Don't get it twisted. But there comes a time that you need a plan for you and your family and your future. Is this making sense? Y'all act like y'all ain't never seen this in the Bible. Because, see, in certain ethnicity groups, they have made you jealous and taught you how to be jealous when your brothers and sisters are successful and succeed. Put me back up because I'm going to say this. You just don't get lucky. There's a few people. But, see, let me, let me make it plain. Let me give it to you in this text because I know church folks play the lottery. Some of them probably got some lottery tickets in their pocket right now. You play the lottery and you hope to win. The people who run the lottery, they don't hope for nothing because they got your money. And ask me why do they promote the lottery? Because when they promote the lottery, every person that buys a ticket, your hope goes down. Your chances of winning go lower every time a person buys a lottery ticket. Because you don't get the lottery number that quick. You can pick your numbers, but your numbers need to match their numbers. And their numbers don't ever come out until they got enough money. Somebody played the lottery say, hey man, shake your head or something. Every time you let someone get ahead of you, and you're not working on your dreams that God has given you and the vision and the innate inheritance that God has given you, somebody's always getting ahead of you. Because there's a culture that have been taught that you should be afraid of money. And the Bible says it's better for a rich man to go through the eye of a needle. It's better for whatever, a camel to go through the eye of a needle than a rich man to enter heaven. Let me, that's a, let me explain that scripture. All the rich man had to do was to bow and humble himself. See, people have preached, and they did the best they could, and some of them didn't, to make you fear being blessed. See, there's this thing called faith and starvation. You're starving, and I feed you faith, but works without faith is dead. 
And, and there's this thing called microwave, and there's this thing called an oven. If you're going to have something that has really good flavor and good taste, it has to be cooked in the oven because generally things in the oven, that's right, generally things in the oven has to have more ingredients. You don't know what they have packaged and all that sodium to give you a taste and feed you garbage. This is why I don't understand people that smoke. You know they put all kind of crap in cigarettes and you still going to smoke it? How you cough and smoke? I go back to this. What is your plan? Quit looking for somebody to do something for you and start talking to God. Old, middle-aged, young, even the dumb. Now ask me why did I say the dumb? Because the dumb have a chance. Stupid don't have no chance. Stupid is a choice. It's okay to be dumb, because if you listen, you can learn. But when you're stupid, you reject information. Put that back up, because we got about five more minutes. Every person, every fee, boy, y'all should have been in Greenville this morning, them female, that's right, I have a plan for my own life, ain't let no man tell me. And I, I you know what, I couldn't say nothing, because most men don't know where they're going. Why would I hitch up with your horse and your wagon and your horse ain't got no head? <laughs> Why would I put my bags in your wagon and your horse don't have no head? Don't know where he going. Don't know what he got. Don't know what he going to do. Scared about everything. Y'all going to be ashamed to get to heaven and look at all the blessings you missed on earth. Ain't nothing wrong with being rich. Ain't nothing wrong with being blessed. Ain't nothing wrong with being wealthy. It's how you handle it. See, the reason, and nobody's taught, I can't say nobody. Many people haven't taught this. The reason God didn't have a problem with Abraham, because Abraham never changed even though he was blessed. The Bible said Abraham had 300 strong men that he could call at the drop of a hat. Y'all ain't got two brothers and two cousins that because if you call one, he's somewhere working and the other fishing and the other one got diarrhea, <laughs> you like just going to get beat up, aren't you? My question to you when I talk about keep the change, who's in your pocket? Who's in your pocket? Because the Bible says the plans of the diligent. So what I did, because uh, I got to get out, because, you know, the Cowboys play today. Yeah, yeah, yeah see, Ricky, he, 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 at what time? Okay, so I can, I can stay to 3.30 then. Okay, I can keep getting through. But here's the thing, the plans. Most people, let me give you this part. Most people work to pay bills. And then their bills, there's no plan for them to do something for themselves. So then now companies own your destiny. Because some people can work for themselves, but they worried about insurance. You need to make enough money that you can cover your own insurance and then work to get wealthy that you can self-insure yourself. Does that make sense? Because, see, here's the thing. The plans of the diligent lead surely. Let me break it down. It didn't say those that hope and maybe. And those that are just going to speak in tongues and shout and, and somebody putting cooking oil on somebody's head now and hollering and screaming and kicking and, and they're going to be real emotional. I just would say, how many ingredients do you have when you walk out of that building? that's going to help you watch this, write this, turn the corner in your life. Because the plans of the diligent lead surely to abundance. But everyone who is what? Hasty comes only to poverty. 
If you look up hasty, it means those that procrastinate. Run real fast. They do this real quick. That's their emotion. And let me give you this. I'm going to give you this, and then we're going to inject. People don't listen to the smartest person in the room. And let me tell you why. Their actions, their action causes this reaction. What, what, what are you saying? People don't want to listen to people who can help them get better. Can I tell you why? You don't like what they're saying. Can I make it plain? What they're saying is unfamiliar to where you're at. See, to grow, can I make it, can I, can I help you for a minute? To grow, you have to hear what you don't know. To grow, you have to accept what you don't like. To grow makes you uncomfortable. This is why Proverbs 21 and 5 in the English Standard Version said, the plans of the diligent. Where would you be without your job? What kind of benefits have you stored up for yourself? Now, men talk about being the head of the house. Well, where's your covering? That woman should listen to me. For what? Because you got on some britches? I know y'all can be mad. But I know ain't none of y'all going to try to fight me. Because that ain't going to end well. <laughs> Am I right, Deke? <laughs> so now what I'm saying, people don't listen to the smartest person in the room. The smartest person in the room, they're not going to speak to your emotions. They're going to speak to your intellect and intelligence. Here's the thing. They, they listen to who, whoever acts like they're right. Can, can we break that down real quick? We listen to people who look like they hot and successful, who look like they got it going on. Most of the people look like they got it going on don't have two nickels to rub together. We're talking about money this morning. They don't have two nickels to rub together. But because they look like something, we follow it. Can I give you the goal? This is what the 18th of September, come January the 1st, 2023, we have a goal, Sister Macon. The goal is this, to become complete, body, mind, and spirit. Complete who God called you to be. Don't be afraid of who you are. And it starts with loving the person in the mirror. Here's what it means. I've said this to some of you all. I'm, I said this in Greenville. I met a young man. He, um, his father's getting old, think he's getting Parkinson's, and so... They had asked me to stop by and meet him, so I stopped by and we chatted. And I don't know who's in your family, but I want you to know this if you don't get anything else out today. You have a gift, and most of the time your gift will crush by other people. Your gift God gave you in a vision. Some of you are still having visions, a little bit of dreams. You have ideas, but because of your circumstances, you don't work your dreams or your ideas. I don't want nobody to raise their hand. Most of you work a job that you're unhappy with and you work for people that you don't like and you think it's the people. Can I help you out? Your gift don't like to be told when people don't know who you are. You have dreams. You have gifts. You have fingerprints that no other person has in this world. And I want to tell you something. God's looking at you. 
every male, every female. God's first man was an entrepreneur. The problem with being an entrepreneur, you have to start small. Too many people want to be big too early. I heard the late Dr. Miles Monroe say, many people in the grave had never discovered who they were. And let me tell you something about your gifts. This ain't prophecy, this is fact. You don't like your gift. But you won't work your gift. I can be honest with you all. I don't like being up here. I ain't never wanted to be no preacher. In fact, if I could get away with it, I'd flip y'all off and go home. Now, I can't be no more realer than that. And some of y'all know me personally. But this is my gift and this is my assignment. I've never been a fan of people who wanted to be a preacher. There's a huge responsibility. A preacher is supposed to help right set your life so you can answer to God with a clear conscience. A preacher's never been called to be your friend, to be your buddy, and to be in your back pocket. And definitely not a pastor. So I'm speaking to somebody this morning that God is not happy with you because he gave you something. Now watch this. And I need some older people in here. You may be the one that God called to leave your family, lead your family out of poverty. Now you can say, well, I didn't put them in poverty. But other people did. But your gift and your skill set and your collection of people to work with you could set your family up because you're going to have nieces and nephews that are going to have gifts that other people won't support. So sometimes you got to learn how to support your own. Because I'm not working for retirement. I'm not working for benefits. Everything I'm building, and I'm 61 years old, I'm building it for my grandkids. Because when I get older and I'm in the pens, they're going to take care of me. Now, my son might flip me off and leave me in the room, and my daughter might leave me in the shower, and I know how y'all will treat me. <laughs> but you have to set up something. Let's go back to the screen. I'm going to give y'all this, and we're going to jet. Proverbs 21 and 5. Read it, the what? Now, now, now just, just speak this in the atmosphere with me. Who got a plan to end third quarter? Who got a plan for fourth quarter? Because if there's no plan now, there's no plan for fourth quarter. Fourth quarter starts October the 1st. What is your financial plan? What is your educational plan? What are you going to do to take care of your body? Have you had your physical this year? Have you had your eyes checked? How much money is coming back to you in fourth quarter? All the shoes you done bought. All the shirts you done bought. What's going to be your check at the end of December the 30th? Ain't nobody want to go with me now. Somebody will holler. Now I need a good Baptist friend. If I had Reverend Curtis, I'd holler, preach. Where are you going to be? Bills don't make you money. I want you today to start thinking, I got to get a plan for my life. Because the whole goal is simple. Becoming complete. If you don't have a plan, the Bible says, this is in Proverbs, what, 21 and 5? The plans of the diligent. That means you got to pay attention to detail. You can't be all in your feelings and emotion. You have an innate inheritance. There's something in the lineage of your family. Can I tell you real quick how I found mine? My great-grandfather, the Reverend Luck Boozer, was from this area. He had four Baptist churches. My grandmother, Dr. S.O. Campbell, she uh, came from Clinton, and she established this church in 52, established Greenville in 58. And what I have from both of them is writings. Now, mind you, what's the little dude back there, Jacob? Jacob, stand up. Come up here with me real quick. Come on up here. I saw your little thing on Facebook. How old are you, Jacob? Come on, hurry up, hurry up. You how old? Nine, you're nine years old. Come on up here. This little fella right here probably could outspell me right now. Thank God that they have spell checks. His grandma over there looking like, I don't know about that. <laughs> you might be able to get him. But here's the thing. Whatever your weakness are, there's a tool for it. I need you to write that down. Whatever your weakness are. 
And so what they should be doing is pouring into him. I want you to do me a favor because you're pretty smart. I, I have, I don't know if I have it in the car, but I'm going to bring a water thing with me, a water little cooler. And you and I are going to save money. And I'm going to help you out, okay? Give me that. All right, appreciate it. See, somebody has weakness and somebody has strength, but when you work together, you're all strong. Does that make sense? So now here's the thing. You have a gift. How many people in here can say they look like somebody or they have the personality of somebody in their family? Y'all don't look like y'all people? Did y'all people have y'all? And I mean, some of y'all might have, you know, they might have found you on the road. I don't know. Everybody in here, you either look like somebody in your family, and here's the thing, there are gifts in your family, and that is called innate inheritance. So back to me real quick. When I saw my grandmother's writing, and I was like, man, Granny was awesome, but it never got out there. And then I saw my grandpa's writing. I, need a, I needed an interpreter to understand his writing. And it hit me. Then why don't I write? And now I have seven books. So my part of my re inheritance and retirement is writing. Never would have known because I can't spell that well. I can count good, but my spelling is bad. Somebody has a gift in here that you have been ignoring for years. So now here's the thing. Then when you merge that with your spiritual birthright, which is being born again according to the Bible where uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus, he said, can a man enter into his mother's womb the second time? And Jesus said, a man must be born of what? The water and the spirit. Once you get that, I'm going to ask you a question. I got about four minutes. How then can you fail? How many of y'all ever had fried pies? There are people that sell in fried pies that Big Mama used to make at the farmer's market right now. There are gifts in your family. The problem is you probably are not happy with your gift. But it's your gift that's going to set you free. Because when you, now let me tell you a secret. When you can respect the gift God has given you, watch your blessings flow. My grandmother told me, she said, you can do whatever you want. And I was making, at that time, I was making good money. I'm not ashamed to say I made over $300,000. My grandmother set me down in the chair and she said, you can make all the money in the world. But God called you and he anointed you. And you're not going to be at peace until you work the gift God has given you. So now, here's where we are. Money. I was looking for this. Money is designed to be a tool for you to carry out your gifts. Here's what it is. Money isn't supposed to and designed to make you feel good. Tell somebody in three minutes it's going to get tight. Money, isn't, money wasn't made to make you feel good. So many people, men and women, shop too much. Money was created to work for you and to bring you more than what you spent. I'll say that again. Money isn't supposed to or was dying to make you feel good. Because people feel good when they have money. That has nothing to do with money. Money was created to work for you. But here's the kicker. But when there's no substance, no plan, put back up the scripture. Then how can you be diligent and how can you be insured an abundance? Let me tell you what happens. Where do you spend your time? And I'm giving you some accolades for the end of third quarter going into first quarter. Here is what I want to challenge you with. Everybody say this with me. Yes, yes. You, can, you can. But should you? Yes, you can spend your money. And if you are taking your paycheck and you're paying bills, you're still not making money. Ask me why. If the insurance company won't give you nothing for it, then why do you have it? Young man came to me today. 
I know there's going to be some blowback. You know, there's a thing about tennis shoes. I'm not going to call a name or a brand. And there are guys that's paying $800, $1,400, $1,500, $2,000 for a pair of tennis shoes. And so the guy was saying this, that, and the other. I said, but do they have a house? No, he, he stayed with his mama. I said, so he's got $2,000 tennis shoes in the closet. He's staying with his mama. He don't have a car. If the house or wherever they live catch on fire, you think the insurance company going to going to reimburse them for them tennis shoes? Hmm? No? So why would you have them? Why would you have anything that can't make you money? Why? I know y'all ain't never. Y'all want me to stay in green, but don't you? Everything you have should make you money. Your house, if you have a house, you draw this thing called equity. If, if you have a car, even though it depreciates, but you need to be in my class because I'll teach you the difference between good debt and upside debt and bad debt and a bad and, and a low end debt. You should buy a car. This, can, can, can I make it plain? How many of you have ever paid a car off? Raise your hand. You ever paid a car? Paid a car off, right? I'm gonna ask you a question. Don't get offended. I know it appears that I'm aggressive. Where the money at? You pay, let's say the car payment three fifty, right? Average three fifty four hundred dollars, right? You paid it for three four years, right? So when you paid that car off, and they sold it to you for seventeen to twenty thousand dollars, let's just round it up. Did it last you another four years? Then why couldn't you pay yourself back? If you can pay them you should have paid yourself back. If you paid $20,000 for a car in four years, $10,000 a year, why couldn't you take that same money out and put it in the same budget line item and pay yourself? Now you would have had your money back and your car, and then you could have sold your car and got something else. Most people are not going to give you money to start a business. You are designed to start your own. Does that make sense? If you had two cars and you paid off two car payments, where are the payments at? Wasn't it a line item when you had to pay it? Oh, I got to go down there and pay them child. They be done cut my car off. But now that you paid that car off, where's that money? You just got it, didn't you? I saw the look of it. Because, see, here's the thing. Society, and I'm, I'm going to give you this. Um, let's see. Where is, where is the oppressor? Okay. Real quick, last phase. Sometimes, some things have more influence over your money than you. We work to pay people. People don't work to pay us. You got to figure out how to switch that. When you, when your paycheck is going to bills, someone else has more influence over your money than you. The second part of this is your attitude. Your attitude can cause you to go bankruptcy real quick. Your attitude can put you in debt. Number three, what happens? People's opinion. You look like you don't have anything. That's good because you won't ask me for nothing. because I need my money to work for me. So I'll say it again. Some things has more influence over your money than you. Attitude, bills, opinion, number, I think it's number four, impulse. Quick to get this. Here is the last one, oppressors. And many oppressors are not people outside your circle. It's people in your circle. They put pressure on you to help them when they have done nothing to help themselves. You can bail them out, but they ain't never in a position to bail. But this didn't go over well at all. Yeah, you bail them out. That's my son. That's, they always going to be your son. They always going to be your daughter. 
But there's a time, Ma and Dad, they got to grow up. And they got to be accountable for their decisions. I didn't, get, I didn't grow up until they cut me off. They didn't give me no more money, didn't help me with no more bills. They said, listen, we broke because of you. Oh, I was mad. I was cussing. I wasn't saved. I'm just being honest. And I sat in my car for three days because I was homeless. And I said, this is on you, bro. It is your decisions. See, when, they were bo- when you conceived them, you carried them. When they began to walk, you toted them. Now it's a time to support them as a resource with knowledge. You cannot, your, your finances, hear me well, and I'm closing. Your finances cannot carry your children, especially if they are of age. I know I'm making it tight, but I, hey, I may not see y'all no more. I can help you, but I can no longer carry you. Because as long as I carry you, you'll keep making these kind of decisions. And as I get older, I have nothing to take care of me. Fixing your problem does not position me for a better day. And tough love, I'm not going to say it's the best love, but it works for most of us. You get a car, you tear it up. Any parents want to attest to that? They tear it up. But when they got to pay for it, they wash it about every other day. So I know this was a bit of tough meat, but the Bible says the plans of the diligent. I sat down with my daughter, who's 33 years old, I think, and I sat down with her today as a father. And I said, I'm the one that put you in the nail business. Now you've graduated, finally graduated after you wasted two degrees on nothing, $57,000 on nothing. Now you've got a job. Now what I want you to do is position yourself. So what I'm trying to tell you is don't quit your other job. Use that to help you get even and get ahead. I know this was tough this morning, but it's the truth. Let's close out with the scripture. As you close out, this, uh, October the 1st is fourth quarter, which is three months. I want you to consider how you better can position yourself financially. Because the Bible says the plans of the diligent leads to what? Surely abundance. The people of God, the believers of God, should be blessed and should be the examples to other people. Does that make sense? We have some decisions and some behaviors to change and make. Because I don't know about you, but I'm 61, and I finally realized there's nobody coming to get me. Nobody coming to bail me out. I think if I went to jail, they'd probably leave me down there. Somebody say, I didn't like him, no way. This is the time to pull it together. So when we go into 2023, and it says, but who is hasty comes only to poverty. Get the ingredients to your life. Seek God for your innate inheritance and get your spiritual birthright in line and you have a fully guarantee that you will not fail. God bless you and I'll see you all.